Would you pray with me? Oh God, as we come before you to hear your word, let me be true. Let me be clear and let your words be heard with our own ears and our hearts, eyes wide open to learn more of you. Thank you for an opportunity to be with and share with our friends. We say this in your name. Amen. So we're looking today at thankful is as thankful does. And as I started at the beginning of the service and I talked about how we've been serving our college students and I gave thanks for what you do. And if I, I couldn't talk about a message in regards to thanksgiving and thankfulness if I didn't thank you for who you are. If I didn't have and be thankful for the church and for ministry and for mission work and for love and for service and inclusion and affirmation, for family, for food on my table, a roof over my head. But I also have to give thanks for the hurts and the hardships and the lessons learned. Because I understand in those hard things and waking up this morning, for some of us, that was a hard thing to do. But we put our feet on the floor and we recognize that that means that we still continue to have a purpose. And so I give God thanks for the hard things because I, I want to understand that in those things, there is a blessed anticipation of what is to come. That I opened my eyes this morning and there was something new that was going to be coming. As I was looking around for some inspiration, as I wrote this message today, I look often to tangible ways of how I can describe how I live or how I try to live in a way that makes sense to me. We read the gospel, and I've read the Bible many, many times, and in the beginning when I started, I wasn't in church, and so it was just kind of scary reading the Bible, and I didn't understand it. But as I moved through ministry and I've learned more, one of the things that I also go to is the dictionary so that I can understand a practical application of what I try to live out. And so I looked up the definition of thankful. And thankful is being aware and appreciative of someone or something. And that made me think a second. And it also created this way of being accountable to you, my closest friends, because I understood that in this way of thankfulness, that there were several things that I was not thankful for. Snow, grasshoppers, spiders. But if I am looking at the true meaning of thanksgiving, I realize that instead of it just being thankful is as thankful does, it's actually thankful is as thankful does. And it changes the meaning of actual thankfulness, to be full of thanks. And my daddy tells me that I'm full of other things. And so I decided to go back to the dictionary again and look up the word full so that I could feel a little bit better about myself. And so the definition of full means containing or holding as much or as many as possible so that there is no empty space left. Now that speaks to me. Because if my cup runneth over, somebody's going to get wet. Well, that's a different idea of thankful is as thankful does. And so I can honestly tell you that I am full of thanksgiving. And I haven't even eaten any turkey yet. Blissful anticipation. But I also have to be transparent and accountable when I tell you that I haven't always felt this way about this season. One of the best parts of being a pastor, and there's lots and lots and lots. But one of the best parts about being a pastor is that I am honored and privileged to have a venue and a platform to be the most effective voice I can for those that are on the margins, for those that cannot live out the pain and the sadness that they actually feel at this time of year. And there were many, many, many years that I was a single mom and I was a single mom during the holiday seasons, and I had five littles. 
that I knew that during this time I was going to fail somehow, that I was going to fall short in being or having all of the things that I thought that they needed. And what had to happen is that I had to rely on people to get me through this because I just wanted out. I didn't want to push through. I didn't want to walk through. I wanted out. I wanted to not be in that cycle, that hamster on a wheel cycle of poverty and not having and and being afraid and being scared and not knowing if I was going to come home and the water was going to be off or was the electricity going to be on. I was tired of living in the cycle and I didn't want through it. I didn't want somebody to pray me through it. I wanted somebody to come and take me out of it. I would have given anything in the world. For somebody to come along and say, here's a hug and a check for $5 million. (laughs) And as you can see, that didn't happen. But for me, it was not the most wonderful time of the year. And that's why this verse that we are hearing is such an important reminder right now. Because for some of you, things are hard and you need hope. And I'm almost going to guarantee you that for all of you, something is hard and you need hope. There are things that we face on a day-to-day basis, and just because it doesn't seem like a big deal to me, I respect the fact that it's a huge deal to you. My pain is not going to be the same as your pain, and my hardship is not going to be the same as your hardship. That's why it's so important that we remember who we are to one another in this idea of prayer. I need others to hold me up and pray for me. And I understand now that the last line of the verse that we heard this morning was so timely. It says, this is the way that our Savior God wants us to live. But it's way more than that. You, you are what I needed to live. You people was what I needed to live because I was not going to be successful in praying for myself. I was not going to be successful in living for myself because I wasn't enough. I wasn't enough. Everything was hurting. Everything was a burden. I was broke, and I was broken. And not only was I broken, but I was shattered in a million, billion pieces with no idea of the way that I was going to be able to be put back together. And I didn't know how to ask for prayer. And I didn't know how to ask for help. Because God and I were not really on speaking terms at all, unless it was me shaking my fist at the sky to tell him how bad he was and helping me live my life. I could do that all day long. Everything was just overwhelming, and I was tired. I was tired. And I wasn't thankful. I was thank empty. And I was sad. This is why this time of year is so important, and it really is for just two simple reasons. This This season of benevolence that we will enter into with the Black Friday mattress sales and the extra bag I can get at Bath and Body Works. This season of benevolence that starts on Black Friday and ends at the end of December is a reminder that we have so much to be full of thanks for. But also that we realize that this begins a thanks for giving way of living. I made that up by myself. <laughs> a thanks for giving way of living that lasts all year long because, friends, I can guarantee you that the need that happens that we fill only happens not during the six weeks between Thanksgiving and New Year's. It happens all year long. The need never, ever stops. But in praying for others, we have a unique opportunity to lift up our friends and loved ones who are living in a hard season of wanting and wandering and hurting. If thankful is, as thankful does, it isn't enough to know it, but to also show it every way you know, for everyone you know, even the people you don't like. 
Even the people that when you're pushing your cart in the Wally world and you're looking for something and they come around the corner and you pretend to look at rutabaga. I don't even know what that is really. So I may really be studying rutabaga. But those people... And then we question why. Why is it so important? And I can tell you first that it's cost you zero dollars to be kind. And I can also tell you that in that kindness, you may be the only one that does that for them. You may be the only person with the kind smile, with the kind word, with the hello. You may be the only person that recognizes them that day as someone who is here. And that means they too have purpose that we need to work in our prayer lives and in our lives of thankfulness, of realizing that people are of sacred worth, that they matter, that thankful is, as thankful does, is in regards to everyone, no matter what. In praying for others, we recognize that we need a reminder because it's just the right thing to do. There's no harm in prayer. Sometimes we need that reminder. Sometimes we forget that what we see in our everyday ordinary is the very same thing that someone prayed for that is their extraordinary. The things that we take for granted is the same thing that somebody else is praying to receive. The things that you have are an answer to another person's prayer. I take you for granted. Your presence and your gifts, I just assume that you will always be here. And we know what assuming does. But you need to know, you need to know that I am thankful for you. And that I pray for you. I really, honestly pray for you. And if everything is going well all of the time, and if it is, I need for you to tell me your secret. But even if everything is going spectacularly for you, I pray for you. One of the things that I've seen going around on social media is where you pray for one person for 30 days and watch to see what God can do. You don't tell them that you're praying for them. You just begin this idea of prayer for a person and see what God can do in their lives just based on your prayers alone. God wants us to live this out in a real way. And I pray for you, and you pray for each other, and they pray for two people, and they pray for two people, and so on, and so on. But if all of you sitting in this room right now prayed for two people, that would be a hundred people being prayed for. And what if those hundred people prayed for two people? Pretty soon you'd have thousands and thousands of people covered in prayer when we feel like we're not being effective in the lives of people that we know and love. This is the way... Because God, our Savior, says this is valuable and valid. But what? What about the least of these? What about those people? What about those people that brought it on themselves? What about those people who make bad decisions or are poor or are homeless or are addicted to drugs or alcohol? What if, I don't have pearls clubbed you my pearls. What if those people included people that didn't know Jesus? What if we pres- just prayed for them? What about if we just adopted the idea of push, pray until something happens? That was back in the Pentecostal church I went to. I won't start dancing, though. What about them anyway? How can we be thankful for things and for people that we don't think pertain to us? That is none of my business. What you have going on and what you're doing doesn't even pertain to me. That is none of my business. What about that? But prayer, no matter what and no matter who, becomes everybody's business. In Methodism, there's something that we say in church sometimes. God is good 
all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. And if that's true, then that means that all things created by God are good, even spiders. This week, we will spend time gathered around tables all over the country. And we will talk about the many things that we are thankful for. We will talk about our many blessings. And as you do, I want you to consider something. What if what you woke up with today was what you prayed for yesterday? Well, that made me think for a minute, and then I had to go send a a text message to all of my children, making sure that all six of them were still here. But it really made me think about what would remain today from what I prayed and thanked God for yesterday. Well, that's a really great way to think about what you've been blessed with. And it's going to be time-consuming, and that's good. Because sometimes we just need that one-on-one time with God. Sometimes we just need to be able to be still and know without all the noise that comes, especially during this time of year. So I found something that was pretty cool, and what it does is it takes the letters of thankful, and it spills them out in a way that I can actually live out. Again, I always look for practical application of how I can live out what I'm talking about. And so thankful came to trustworthy, haven, affirming, neighborly, kind, forgiving, uplifting, and loving. So those are the touch points in my life, or am I these things to other people? And also, because I recognize that the world is kind of hard on us sometimes, I look for those things in other people. I always want to create and have relationships with people where I can be an example and that my life is enhanced by their presence and I do the same for them. Well, how do we live that out and why is it so important? Because even people that think that they have no hope will tell you something that they're grateful for, that they're thankful for. People that are down to their last dime will be thankful that they have one. And so if we look at this again, this is the way our Savior God wants us to live, then we also have to look at what is good, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in God. No more, no less, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, except when it isn't, when life gives you lemons and you don't want to make lemonade. Sometimes the thanksgiving is bittersweet because maybe you have to give God thanks for things you didn't ask for. Maybe you have to give God thanks for something that you didn't really want. Maybe you have to give God thanks for saying no. Maybe you have to give God thanks in the waiting time to see what's going to happen. Maybe you're going to have to give God thanks when he says, stop knocking on that door because that's not for you. Maybe there's going to be an empty place at the table this year. Maybe there isn't going to be anything on the table this year. Maybe there's not even going to be a table this year. And yet, we carry on. The sun will still rise, and the sun will still set, and the earth is still going to spin on its axis. We can glorify and magnify Jesus in all of it. We can continue to run and to walk and to sometimes crawl through our every day and sometimes even be drug kicking and screaming. Amen? Yeah. And we smile and we breathe in and we breathe out and then we live life as moments of snapshots of laughter and of tears and we praise God in the good times and we praise God in the bad times and when he closes the door we praise him in the hallway and we give thanks honest and true thanks for all things no matter what and no matter who because thankful is as thankful does amen